Hello everyone, my name is Blue, and today we'll be reading some pro-revenge stories. I did to my neighbor what they did to others. To start, I bought a house with the intention of doing a flip. When I moved in, the self-appointed block captain let me knew who they were the first day. Sadly, they were my next door neighbors. I tried to be friendly, but listening to them, I realized how horrible they were and tried to keep still be civil. My significant other kept saying, just wait for it to be our turn. They bragged about, through their contacts with the city, forcing people to make improvements on their houses, getting undesirable renters out of the houses and just harassing people in general. As I worked on flipping my house, the wife became a worse thorn in my side. To start, she demanded I put up a fence so people would quit cutting through my yard and scaring her. Then, her and the husband demanded I take care of the weeds in the yard or they will do it and bill me. After that, a storm, a tree scraped their shingles and they asked for $1,200 to replace them. The tree was there before I moved in and by co-ed, they are responsible to cut back the branches to the property line. When I wouldn't pay that, they had a relative jump my fence and cut the trees down. Needless to say, I began to ignore to them so she became a constant gnat and moved on to another target. Then one day, as I was tearing down my deck for a patio, I realized she put a feral cat colony on a section of my property. I had wondered why all the stray cats were around and I finally found out. I reached out to the city and demanded it be removed, but they said she followed the law on getting it in place. As I tried to get it shut down, she began unhinged behavior from standing in her window staring at me, yelling at the window at me, to hitting the fence with items to scare my dog. Here, my revenge started. I started by filing an HRO harassment restraining order against the wife and had it granted ex parte with the evidence I provided. Of course, she contested it as it was defamatory to her character. Before the hearing, the husband tried to physically intimidate me. So I filed one against him and it was also granted ex parte. In the hearing, it came up that there was an HRO against the husband as well. They dogged being served until I had it published as a means of service. I started to make complaints about them and their house. Also, I made police calls when necessary. As I did this, the other neighbors began to realize they could do to them what they had done to them and others. For example, as I was having my front door replaced, needing a building work permit, I knew they were doing internal remodeling, so I called a city inspector and they were fined for not having a permit. As she ranted at the inspector, he looked at my window and saw I had mine displayed. Their back porch became hoarded, so I made another call to a city inspector and they had to clear it out. Then they had a broken window on the porch door, so I called an inspector and they had to replace the door. Next, the paint on their house was peeling, so I called an inspector and they had to repaint. The inspector also found the wood underneath was rotted, along with their front porch was sloping. So they needed to fix the front porch, sections of wood, and repaint. Through all this, they had up cameras to prove they were not doing the things I said, i.e. hitting the fence. They also pointed a camera at my backyard. As it was legal to point a camera into my yard and a part of my HRO was her intrusive watching behaviors, I gave the camera the middle finger on my way to and from my garage. When she complained, with the city tiring of her, their response was she was admitting to intrusively watching me. The fight over the cat colony came to an end when I realized one of the cats had a serious disease and I began to capture them and turn them into animal control. Don't worry, animal control was part of the feral cat program, so they would not be put down, but the neighbor would have to pay a fine to get each cat out or have the colony closed. Finally, I caught the sick one and it had rabies. Part of the program was for her to capture each new cat, have it vaccinated. 
something she admitted to willing not doing on her GoFundMe for the colony. I soon had the GoFundMe shut down when I provided the evidence she was not using the funds as she stated they were going to be used. The city now had to act to close the colony. The person at animal control who wouldn't respond to my complaints was fired. The neighbors called in a city mediator who we met with, presented all the evidence and said we would not meet with them and provided extremely racist tweets they made about neighbors. The city cut ties with them as community leaders. With their power to bully gone and having spent what I can only imagine in fines and repairs, like they did to numerous other neighbors. After 14 years, they sold their house and moved out, way out to the suburbs where they only have one neighbor about 50 yards away. They knew I was wrapping up my flip and would be out in less than a year. Without being able to bully their neighbors, with people having their back, they seemed to have no further reason to stay. Needless to say, I did several more things to wear them down. Finally, when I listed my house, it was sold, while theirs was still on the market. As a final FU to them, I reported to the county they had both the new and the old house listed as their homestead, meaning they were paying less in property taxes. So they got hit in with more fines on my way out. I feel like when you buy a house, the neighbors should have to list their relationships with the other neighbors, so you know if you have a bad one before you move in. Didn't pay for fireplace? Ended up with a house full of smoke. A friend of mine used to install wood stoves and sell firewood. He still sells firewood, but stopped bothering with fireplaces. This one guy bought a fireplace and wanted it installed. My friend did this, but told him he would need a higher chimney for better air drawing. The guy refused it. I'm assuming maybe he didn't want a higher chimney for the look? And my friend kept insisting. The owner said no, and when the fireplace was done, he complained it was hard to get a fire going due to the chimney being too short, leading to poor drawing of air. My friend came with a chimney extension and it worked fine, but he decided he didn't want to pay still, even though the job was done and done well. So a few weeks later, my friend was passing through the area and saw nobody was home, but there was a fire going to keep the house warm. Owner must have been at work. So my friend climbed up onto the roof and got his chimney extension back. It was a plus, but not enough to cover everything that was installed and the time put in. Where things get funny is that once he took the extension off the chimney, due to poor drawing of air, the house started to fill up with smoke as the fire burned. The owner must have come home to a thick, smoke-filled home. Try getting that smell out of stuff. Probably a layer of soot on everything. To my recollection, the owner didn't have any pets, so no lives were harmed. But when everything you own is black and reeks like smoke, and your home is freezing in the middle of winter, I bet you would have rather paid someone for their products and services. I hate people like that. When they know from the point they hire you, no matter how good of a job you do, they will still try to find some reason not to pay you. This is the kind of thing that gets my blood boiling. I don't understand why you would hire someone, argue with them, and then when they fix a problem, not pay them for their services. It doesn't make any sense to me. Just pay the people you hire. That's, that's how the whole interaction works. You hire someone, you pay them, you get good work. Anyways, that's all the time we have today for these pro-revenge stories. Thanks for tuning in and listening to our stories. If you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing, and I'll catch you next time.